See, when I try to imagine a scene where I'm being informed of uh, the death of a loved one, like I, I immediately start to piece that scene together from things that I've seen on TV. Like it's TV that tells me what that is supposed to look like. You know, you, know, you, you can imagine someone turning to you in, you know, in slow motion and saying, oh, you, know, you better take a seat. And then your head's spinning as you're waiting for that name. And then all of a sudden, it's out there, and, you know, and for a second, you, you, you're, you're blind, and, and, and it hurts, and you're trying to make a word, but you can't. Okay, look, I know, I know my acting isn't particularly convincing, but see, the important thing is, I'm, I'm just not trying to play a game with you. I, I just want you to recognise the fact that, like, that I've practised all these kind of routines that exist around grief. They're just things that I think I've just gone away and, and, and memorized. And I'm not trying to score points either. For me, this is not about pain. It's just a question of posturing, you know. The first thing that went through my head when I heard that my granddad had died was TV, not, not, not the wisdom imparted on me by my, by my family. And of course, you know, I, I did feel sick, but sickness, it's just something that I think Hollywood has taught me. It transports me for a fee to a place off screen where a fresh script is waiting. Truth is though, you know, we can't take photos of death. Death has got no shape, just a smell. And to look upon the kingdom, I believe, is just to look upon a fiction. That's why. When my granddad died, it was like someone turning in slow motion. You better take a seat. Suddenly my head's spinning as I'm waiting for that name and then, yeah, it's out there. For a second, I'm blind and it hurts and I try and make a word, but I can't. Look, I know my acting isn't particularly convincing. You see, I'm not trying to play a game with you here. I just want you to recognise the fact that I've practised all these routines around grief, the things that I've memorised, and I'm not trying to score points either. You know, it's not about the pain, but the posturing. The first thing that went round my head when I heard that my granddad has died was TV, not the wisdom imparted by my family. And yes, I felt sick. The sickness, if you follow me, is something that I think Hollywood has taught me. It transports me for a fee to a place off screen where a fresh script is waiting. But the truth is, we can't take photos of death. Death has no shape, just a smell. And to look upon the kingdom is to look upon a fiction, well, I can't say heaven without sounding like a tool. A gold key turning in a lock, blood rushing into the head, sleep tight, sweet prince. Now you belong to the library. Ever since the pharaohs, the dead get a guidebook. And we sprayed those words on the high walls, effed our way into custody, begged the city for another day, always trying to talk to the camera, born and raised as a dribbler. It's just how we marked our territory, caught between the story of the hero and the victim, both of songs that can put you on your feet, both lead eventually to a broken neck, but the song carries on. Don't worry, he's gone to a better place, really. Well, why greet the boatman with open palms and tokens, fervent with directions to someone else's heaven? Why greet my granddad at the gates of a world that isn't mine? See, if I'm gonna see him later, I have to build a place to put him in that I can define. So if you're willing, take a minute and sit right there on the chair he used to rock me to sleep in. The chair where my dreams were replaced by the television always, same time, same channel. Me waking to find I knew the script backwards. Please, Grandad, recreate every letter you wrote me and the reasons you wrote them too. I want to picture you before the world hardened, back when you could move like I did. One dance on your slippers for every time I missed it. And I'll fight off every angel. I'll pull the plug on heaven, let it gurgle down the drain. I'll hide you in stories that my grandma told when I was sick. Who cares about the truth? Her license was to entertain. So, for a second, forgetting my age, if I could find a single point in time that I could loop you in until I die. I choose four years old, outside the Odeon on South Park Street, both of us about to see a ghost for the first time. This is the place. <laughs> so, uh... As it turns out, 
Uh, my granddad was a massive fan of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. As far as I could tell, it's one chronologically at least, it's one of the last entries onto the videotape. I didn't put it there. I'm assuming he must have. Now I don't know how familiar you are with the narrative arc of the show, but it features the actor Will Smith, who, who plays a character called Will Smith, who's brought up in the Philadelphia Projects. Uh, one day there's a uh, the chance encounter uh, with a local gang, uh, which escalates, you know, really quickly uh, into Will spinning around a man's head. An act that greatly disappoints his mother, who decides that Will should leave Philadelphia and relocate to a residential community in the west side of the hills of Los Angeles to live with his relatives. Now, suddenly Will is transported into a palatial paradise where even his slightest whim can be actualized. You know, it's almost as if he's died and gone to heaven. And who are we to say whether or not the Fresh Prince of Bel Air isn't exactly that, a kind of hip-hop twilight zone what if will was killed on that basketball court a teenage rebellion rudely interrupted mid tack will never left this courtyard his body held in its golden ratios and yet his spirit played on searching for something beyond the hoop but here's where the story gets dark because his struggle with the system is far from over for it turns out that the god he meets is not the one he believes in and will must suffer the trauma of heaven the hegemonic state incapable of granting will the paradise that he desires now suddenly trapped in a sterile vision of happiness traced straight out of the renaissance what can will do but gird his senses and begin to rebuild a new Philadelphia right here in heaven, reconstructing his entire life inside the very mind of God. And when I imagine my granddad sitting there night after night watching the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I feel connected to him in ways I've forgotten possible. Like, and I know it sounds stupid, but try writing about death just end up staring at a brick wall. But I thought if I wrote about that brick wall, I might just say something about the meaning of death. So I developed a game, a technique that I could play around with. I let the Fresh Prince tell me what to say. He could do the hard work for me. If it messes up, what's the worst that could happen? Um, yeah, but well, at the very least, you know, I might hear a voice hidden in the whirlwind, a secret message coded in the background. Like it's simple, really. All I gotta do is follow the prince as he leaves his earthly world behind. And with his direction, I can follow my granddad beyond the grave into the light. Now, my granddad was one quarter Buddhist. Like, I'm an atheist at best. So when it comes to death, I'll look for peace anywhere. I'll even sit on the throne as. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that. Four years old in the front row seat. Title slide like a whiteboard squeak. Lesson one, lights off, don't speak, don't scream. The ghost can't leave the screen. And scary right, all done with light. Cross beams, repeat the scene. Trace where the ghosts have been, learn the routine. Point at F, pretend to clean. See, it's not what it seems, that you're part of the team. Born forever to repeat these moves. Caught in a loop, trapped in a game that we're destined to lose. Maybe this time. Ooh, the locals are spooked, which brings me a lesson to see the clock turn back so we never get old just like i ain't afraid of no ghost we'll never get old right on time we'll always stay fresh you and i grandfather and grandson death is a door a revolving one then if you push hard enough we'll meet somewhere on the other side of the screen perhaps it's a curse to save your goodbyes then again i don't know maybe that's uh, just the price stepping in the same river twice. Man, this door like straight out of black, you look. Like the 70s crawled up in here and died. <laughs> yeah, J.J. Walker's lips probably around here somewhere. Still don't get that joke.